Today we're doing a quick one. We're making popcorn cauliflower. It's crispy, it's easy, doesn't take long at all. And we're also serving it with a really delicious smoky sauce as well. Perfect combination, let's jump straight in. Now for the prep, we're going to need one cauliflower. Size doesn't really matter here, it just depends on how you use it. And obviously the larger the cauliflower, the more you are going to get out of this recipe. Stand it up and then trim around the leaves, removing them from that core. Some might be more than others, so just make sure you're getting all of it out. And we have no use for it in this recipe, so just get rid of it. Once it's all cleaned up, we can start trimming the florets off of that core. Just go around it, stand it up, and just make sure the blade is facing away from you and you're not cutting directly towards yourself because accidents do happen. And then once you have all of the florets removed from that core, we can start trimming them up. And you're looking for something that's about bite size. Obviously, the smaller they are, the quicker they're going to cook. The larger they are, the longer they're going to cook. And also, you want to make sure that they're all consistent size because you don't want some cooking before others and vice versa. Also, if you want to use the core, you're more than welcome to trim that up too. To make a quick sauce, I would usually make my own mayonnaise, but my fiance is pregnant, so I can't use raw eggs, so I have to use store-bought. What I have here is about three quarters of a cup of whole mayonnaise. Just add that into a bowl. Follow that up with one tablespoon of tomato sauce, also known as tomato ketchup. One tablespoon of creamed horseradish. This is easy to find in most supermarkets. One tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Then add in one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, about a quarter of a teaspoon of chili powder, it's completely optional. Add in a pinch of salt, and of course, cracked black pepper, 10 cracks worth. Give it a good mix, make sure nothing's clumped up and all of those ingredients can become friends. Should have a nice pale red color, almost like orange as well. And what you're looking for is something that looks like this. Give it a quick taste just to try. Adjust it if necessary, but that sauce is delicious. Now for our batter, add one cup of plain all-purpose flour to a bowl, along with one cup of soda water, which is just heavily carbonated water. Give this a really good whisk around. Just want a nice, smooth, thin batter. We don't want it to be too gluggy. That way it'll just become a big mess. If you do find it is a little bit too gluggy, just add a touch of soda water at a time, just until you find that right consistency. As for consistency, you're looking for something that looks like that, or nice and smooth. Now in this bowl, I have three cups of panko breadcrumbs. You don't have to use panko if you don't want to. You can use regular breadcrumbs, that's completely fine. Add in one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, two teaspoons of smoked paprika, and two teaspoons of dried Italian herbs. Season with a little bit of salt, and of course, cracked black pepper again, 15 cracks worth. You can use a whisk here if you prefer. I just like to get in there with my hands. Just mix this all together. Make sure it's completely mixed through all of those crumbs. And what you have is all of that. Now, when you're ready to coat these, what we're gonna do is place our cauliflower into our batter. You can do a few at a time, it doesn't really matter. Make sure you drip off any excess batter. Obviously, we wanna leave it in there so we have enough to do the rest of them. Then into that crumb, just give this a really good mix around. Make sure everything is coated and there's no wet spots still left on them and then just place them onto a tray. Also, whilst you're doing this, you don't have to do it one at a time. I was obviously just doing that for demonstration. But if you're picking them up in clumps like what I'm doing, just make sure you scrape off any excess batter. Once you have that all done, you have all of these little pieces of cauliflower ready to be cooked. Now there's three ways you can cook this, air fryer or in the oven, or if you wanna deep fry them, it's all completely up to you. But for this method, we are going to be using the air fryer. I'm just gonna spray a little bit of oil in there just so nothing catches. Gently add the cauliflower in there. Don't throw it all in. We don't want this all falling apart, especially that crumb, because it can be quite delicate. And depending on the size of your air fryer, you might need to do this in batches. It's best not to overcrowd it. As you can see, just done a nice layer on the bottom. Nothing sitting on top of one another. Let's then whip out our beast. Chuck these in there. Turn on the air fryer, manual cooking. I'm going to do this for about 10 to 12 minutes. I'll start off on 12. 190 degrees Celsius, which is 375 degrees Fahrenheit double airspeed, push go, and then we'll let this run. Now when there's about six minutes left, just take these out, give them a little spray, just so they don't completely dry out, and just give them a little shake. Chuck that back in, and just cook for a final six minutes. Now I have something I'd like to introduce to you. I've been working on something in the background and Koi Knives and I have partnered up to create my very own knife and there's only a very limited number of these knives being made. With this style of blade, I've combined two of my favorite knives together, the Gyoto or the chef's knife and the Santoku, which is just an all-rounder. 
but combined together, we've got this beautiful shaped blade, a nice pointy tip, and a super lightweight and durable knife that will stay sharp for a very long time. Not only that, these handles are absolutely beautiful, made with wood and resin, and I've chosen a really nice ruby red, sort of like burgundy color, and the handles just fit so comfortably in the hand. These are beautiful knives. Now, as for the specifications, this is a VG10 core, 33 layers of cladding on either side, meaning it's a Damascus steel with that beautiful ripple effect, and then a nice hammered finish for that aesthetic touch. These are beautiful knives. They aren't just good looks either. They perform incredibly well. I'm super proud to be partnering with Koi to be able to do this. And I wouldn't be able to do this stuff without you guys' support. So I really do appreciate that. If you do wish to grab one using the link in the description, all you need to do is click on back this project. It will then take you into this page where you can click on this link right here. Click down in the corner where it says pledge. All you have to do is click on that. It will then ask you to sign in if you have a Kickstarter account. If you don't, just go to the bottom of this little bit here and you can click sign up. It doesn't take very long at all. Once you have signed up or signed in, it will then take you back to that previous page where you can click on that link again. Click the pledge button down in the bottom and then all you have to do is fill out all of your credentials. It will show you the shipping price and everything like that. Then click pledge and it's done. And there is only a very limited number of these knives. So if you do want one, please do get in quick. When that's all done, we can start adding these into a bowl. You can hear they're pretty crispy as well. Season them up with a little bit of salt. Give them a good toss around. Just to make sure all of that salt's mixed in. Then we can start serving this up. Just make sure you stack them nice and high. And my beautiful people, well that wasn't supposed to happen. And my beautiful people, what we have just created are these cauliflower bites. They're super crispy, they look fantastic. And don't forget to serve it with that little mayonnaise that we made. Done that a few times, we accidentally leave it in the fridge. With that all said and done, there's only one thing left to do. Dip it in that sauce and we can then dig in. It's definitely the texture that differentiates these. The crisp crunch really is beautiful. The cauliflower in the center is nice and juicy as well, and it's not too overcooked or undercooked. It has that perfect bite, and that smoky sauce just balances it all really well. It really is the perfect combination, and it's such a simple recipe to share with your friends or just have a snack for yourself. If you enjoyed this one, hit that like button, leave a comment for the algorithm, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. It's completely free. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.